Hello and good morning, everyone. Uh, so just before uh, starting uh, uh, to present you the, the agenda, I just wanted to precise that uh, your microphone are off, but you can, uh, during all the presentation, ask your question thanks to the chat on your right. And um, we will answer to uh, all of them at the end of the presentation. But feel free to uh, ask the question when, when it comes. Uh, so to start with uh, the agenda, first I will present you uh, uh, quickly uh, Limagrain ingredient. Um, and then uh, after looking more precisely some market trends regarding pulses, Chen Chen Chan, our R&D specialist, will present um, uh, our solutions more in details. And maybe she can just say hello. <laughs> hello, everyone. Bonjour, <laughs> guten Tag, good <Thanks>. morning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chen Chen. Um, and also for your information, we have uh, also our sales managers and uh, other experts in, um, in, in, uh, in process in order to answer to all the questions you could have. Then let's start with Limagrain Ingredients. Um, at Limagrain Ingredients, we create tasty, healthy, nutritional experiences, and we proceed more than 330,000 tons of cereal and grains uh, per year. Um, we develop and produce natural and trustworthy ingredients with um, distinct functionalities. And we have several processes um, which allows us to offer ingredients such as native flour, thanks to our meals, or um, heat treated flowers, uh, extruded flowers, or puffed cereal, mainly. Uh, we are present in Europe um, in three main application markets, uh, let's say feed, pet food, and food, uh, all over Europe. Um, regarding uh, Limagrain ingredient in Europe, our headquarter is uh, in France, in Auvergne, uh, near Clermont-Ferrand. And we, it's where we have our meals and uh, ingredient factories. Um, you can see also that we have two sites for heat treated flour, what we call functional flowers also. Uh, one in Arc in the north of France and one in Wirt um, in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, it's where we produce uh, also the, the, puffed, uh, the puffed product that we call Presco. And we have an office, a uh, sales office in the United Kingdom and one in Germany. So to continue, I'm just going to present you uh, some uh, solution uh, dedicated for pet food. So the first one, uh, it's an all range of puffed grain that we call Presco. Um, Presco, they are 100% natural produced uh, thanks to a high pressure cooking. And so it allows um, to have a high level of pre-gelatinization starch. Uh, then it's totally suitable for, uh, for rodent and birds, especially to enhance then acceptance uh, of the feed. Um, or also it can give high nutritional value and excellent binding properties for cold pressed pellet stock food. Uh, and finally, it could also fit for horses or in muesli and pellets. If you have some question on this, don't, uh, don't hesitate and we will uh, answer at the end. And uh, of course, uh, we have a whole range with a lot of um, various grain uh, or cereal puffed that it can be presented. Uh, to continue, uh, we have uh, we are also a European leader, uh, food and feed. Uh, I mean, in uh, heat treated uh, flowers, and we offer a specific range for uh, for pet food, which is called pet flower. It brings instant binding properties and excellent texturizing functionalities, thanks to starch pre-cooking also. Then it brings in, um, then the, this ingredient uh, range is very versatile and um, it can improve a lot of pet food products like uh, pet kibbles or snack and treats for dogs or semi-moist products, for example. And you have here some, um, some examples. Then looks uh, if we look at uh, the trend in the pet food market, 
uh, we can say that the main important things um, regarding the pet food market is that uh, the pet owner are becoming nowadays pet parents. Uh, then the pet is a member uh, of the family and then his food and uh, is very of importance. Then indeed we can see that uh, we find in pet food market more or less uh, the same trends that we can um, experiment in the food market. And else is of high importance. We want how pet uh, eat as healthy as us. And then we want, for example, to have um, for them some grain-free option, allergen option, um, all the things we can uh, we can have also for uh, as a human. Um, and then as a human, we want uh, our pets also to have variety in their diet. And we don't want them uh, to have the same food twice, twice a day. So that's complexify everything. <laughs> and uh, to finish, Naturality, um, as in food, is a, a great pillar. You can see that 53% of pet food product launches um, have a natural claim, uh, like no additive preservative. So it's a uh, it's linked to the to the health, but um, naturality it's yeah it's very important for uh, all the all the people. Uh, for them, and as we see, as they become pet parents, uh, yeah, it's as important for them than for their pets. To continue, as the pet parent want health and naturality for their pets, uh, they are indeed especially interested in high protein pet food and indeed plant based <clears throat> protein. We can notice that near half of the pet food buyer in the UK would be interested in buying high protein pet food and some will be ready to pay more for this uh, high protein pet food so that that's great and then uh, you can see here also then the market start to answer to this demand with some product with a claim related to uh, protein so six percent uh, for the moment but uh, it's increasing so uh, we can um, uh, definitely uh, say that it's a, it's a trend. To conclude with this quick part, we can say that the plant-based product for pet food are growing interest, mainly like um, to the expectation of the pet parents to give healthy and, um, and natural product to their pets. And legume and plant-based product can totally answer to this. And um, I would say that a great thing also for uh, the plant-based product is that it's also totally aligned with ecological award, um, awareness uh, that the people have as consumers. So, um, as I said, all the things they want for them, they want also for their pets. So that's uh, uh, quite important for, uh, for them. So to use sustainable sources and to give healthy product um, to uh, to their pets. So I'm going to give the floor to uh, to Chen Chen to follow on this subject. Thank you, Pauline. Uh, I will go back to this slide to uh, elaborate a little bit more. Uh, we know nowadays, uh, yeah, there's trends of uh, non-grain uh, pet food, and that there's also demands of uh, high crude protein diet with an accept, uh, accept, uh, acceptance, accepted uh, price level. Uh, pulses or legume grains bring extra value to our four-legged uh, uh, friends, thanks to their high protein content as well as uh, vitamins, trace elements, and antioxidants. Of course, they also um, uh, provide uh, uh, quite a high level of starch. And most of uh, pulses are quite low in calories. They are used in different uh, applications. Uh, because of their low glycemic index, uh, pulses or grain uh, legume, see, uh, legume seeds are also of great interest in weight control diets, for example, for obese dogs. Uh, we say legumes are sustainable. Why is that? Because they can fix their own nitrogen. So no extra nitrogen fertilizer is needed. And if it's even better that they contribute a significant amount of soil nitrogen 
which is available for the following crops to use. That's the reason uh, we call uh, we call legume seeds uh, sustainable. So now let's go to the next slide. Uh, we focus especially on uh, two kinds of uh, uh, legume seeds, uh, namely faba beans and uh, peas. Faba beans are also called fava beans, broad beans, and etc. It has many names. Uh, it has a higher nutritional content. For example, its amino acid profile has a higher lysine content. Lysine is one of the uh, limiting essential amino acids. On the contrary, it's relatively low in sulfur-containing amino acids, uh, such as uh, methionine. As for the uh, same fam family member, peas, it's called field peas or yellow field peas. The amino acid profile is uh, well balanced in lysine. Uh, it's like uh, uh, in faba. It's quite uh, low in tryptophan and sulfur-containing amino acids. Nevertheless, it's a particularly valuable protein source in organic diets when, for example, soya and industrial um, amino acids are prohibited to use uh, uh, regarding the concern of, uh, for example, GMOs. And a study also showed that the peas could improve metabolic health of obese dogs. Uh, as we know, pulses uh, contain um, a lower amount of uh, sulfur-containing amino acids. When we do formulating, uh, it's required to bring extra uh, crystalline amino acids or mix with the cereal proteins to improve the protein level when yeah, cereals are not the concern. Uh, generally speaking, the amino uh, acid composition of pulses and uh, cereals is complementary to each other because one is higher in lysine, uh, less uh, pulses, and one is higher in um, sulfur-containing amino acids. Let's go to the second, uh, uh, the next slide. Uh, we know already pulses are a good source of uh, uh, pro proteins. Uh, let's have a close look on the amino acid content. This figure shows the uh, essential amino acid content uh, based on dry matter. As we can see here, faba beans, which are indicated by the blue bars, um, have higher uh, lysines, threonines, etc. However, when we go to the next slide, um, this figure shows that uh, the amino acid profile uh, based on 100 gram uh, cr uh, crude protein. As we can see here, uh, the peas, which are indicated by the red bars, um, they win over faba beans. So to conclude, they both have their advantages. Uh, faba beans uh, provide higher level of crude protein to the diet. However, peas are more valuable regarding the essential amino acid levels. Now we'll, let's go to the next slide. Uh, I have been talking, um, I have been speaking well of uh, the pulses. What are the constraints? Well, this slide shows the constraints. Firstly, Pulses contain bitter flavor, which is not uh, well accepted by dogs. Secondly, um, there are different kinds of anti-nutritional factors. For example, uh, protease inhibitor, lactins, uh, uh, tannins, uh, which can reduce the absorption of nutrients. Thirdly, uh, when pulses are ground, they are susceptible to rancidity when we start them for a longer period of time, especially for uh, faba beans, because it contains omega-3 and omega-6 uh, fatty acids. However, with our processing technology, we can deal with these constraints. Our solution to these constraints are pet flower faba and pet flower happy. With the fari gel process, we got heat-treated faba bean flour. 
there are four advantages of uh, pet flower faba. Uh, firstly, it contains high level of proteins, approximately 29%, along with uh, uh, seven to eight percent of a dietary fiber and a small quantity of fats. Uh, secondly, it uh, has uh, probiotic oligosaccharides and resistant starch to improve am amino and animal health. Thirdly, uh, due to its low glycemic uh, index, it allows our pets to stay fuller for a longer period of time due to slowed digestion. And lastly, it's a natural source of B group vitamins. It's high in iron, a source of calcium as well, as well as uh, phosphorus, zinc, magnesium, and natural antioxidants. As for pet flower happy, with the extrusion process, we got pre-gelatinized yellow pea flower. It contains about 22% of crude protein. It has a fully gelatinized starch, as well as fibers and a low level of fats. It's a natural source of uh, vitamin B1, phosphorus, folic acids, iron, potassium, and magnesium. Because of the uh, processing, it gives great functional properties, including emulsifying, high binding capacity, and it also has excellent water holding capacity for higher cooking yields. Lastly, uh, it's also non-allergic. Now let's have a look on the technical benefits of uh, pet flour. Uh, as we know, uh, due to the reduced uh, anti-nutritional factors compared to raw materials, we are able to improve the protein digest digestibility. Uh, due to lower microbial and enzymatic activities, we can prolong the shelf life to 12 months. And it gives uh, a good uh, functional property, including emulsifying, solubility, processability, and cooking yield. Of course, all the uh, processing technologies are 100% natural without any added chemicals. Now let's have uh, a look at the recommendations. Based on the dog's accept, uh, acceptance and the different kinds of uh, applications, uh, the inclusion rate of pet flower fiber can be up to 20%. As for pa uh, pet flower happy, it can be uh, as high as 30%. Uh, of course, when we do for formulation, we have to take uh, the proportion of essential amino acids and other amino acids into consideration. So if we use a lot of uh, pulses, um, we need to bring extra crystalline amino acids or uh, cereal proteins to uh, enrich the protein levels. And for the applications, it can be used in cold pressed pet food due to uh, its good uh, binding capacity. We know the higher the pre-gelatinized uh, starch, the higher the binding capacity. So uh, with that, we also created uh, a pet flower with a higher starch level. That's uh, uh, pet flower 25501. It's high starch pea, uh, uh, pea flower. And for other applications, for example, then it can also be used in dental sticks or other snacks or semi-moist products. For extruded pet food, it's also quite useful. You can reduce the hardness and toughness induced by high inclusion rate of a non-treated fava bean flour. Then the bottom line. We know our pulse-based pet flour are great natural sustainable ingredients that, that can be used in different pet food applications uh, because the anti-nutritional factors are reduced uh, because, uh, due to the heat treatment. Pulse-based pet flour are grain-free 
and contribute to the health of the pets because of the high protein content, natural minerals and vitamins, as well as a, 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 a proportional resistant starch. Therefore, it's a very versatile ingredient for dogs. I think this is the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, you can write it in the chat or the questions. Thank you. Thank you, Chen Chen. Um, we can wait a little bit to, for the questions. But we already had um, one. Uh, which was um, how much trypsin inhibitor ca you can reduce by processing? Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, with our uh, practical experience, we can uh, reduce the trypsin inhibitor activity uh, around the, like uh, eight, uh, not 80, 60, 60 percent. Thank you. Uh, the other one is, I heard there are different varieties of peas and fava bean with different level of anti-nutritional factors. Could you tell me what's the differences? Yeah, uh, there are different variety of peas or fava beans uh, because of their, yeah, they have like brothers and sisters. Uh, the main difference, uh, of course, is the mm, anti-nutritional factors. Uh, the breeders are trying to breed uh, a piece of uh, uh, all fava beans with a lower amount of uh, uh, anti-nutritional factors. When you only look at the um, the flower uh, of the fava beans or peas, um, <clears throat> generally speaking, when the flower is uh, the flowers are <clears throat> sorry uh, white, uh, it contains lower anti-nutritional factors. There are also other kind of varieties. If we don't talk about anti-nutritional factors, but to talk about the the crude protein level, the starch level. Thank you for the question. Uh, there's also one on uh, why does fava bean contains more resistant starch? Yeah, for the resistant starch, we know um, in nature. For starch, there are two components, the amylate, amylose, and amylopectin. Uh, when a grain or pulses uh, contain more uh, amylose, um, it has naturally more uh, resistant starch. <clears throat> Sorry. Resistant starch means they, they are starch. They, uh, they are derived from starch but the, they behave like uh, fermentable fiber. So they can increase, uh, they can have the prebiotic effect in the hindgut. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chen Chen. Uh, I think we don't have any more questions, but uh, uh, feel free to, um, to contact afterwards uh, your sales um, uh, the sales manager who is responsible for uh, your account uh, to to have some more information or uh, yeah some or some samples etc. So don't hesitate. Um, thank you very much to participate to uh, to this webinar, and I hope uh, we will see you soon. Thank you. Thank very you. Much.